handshake, a, a high five, a hug. Let them know that you're good, uh, happy to see them this morning. This is the day that you have made. We just want to rejoice in it, oh God. Thank you, Father, for keeping us throughout this week, oh God. Thank you for all that you've been doing for us, oh God. I just pray in the precious name of Jesus, oh God, uh, that you would just comfort, oh God, those that have lost, oh God. I pray, Father, this morning, right now, that you would just keep them, oh God. I pray, Father, for salvation this morning. I pray for deliverance this morning. I pray, for, Father, that you will transform this morning by your power in the precious name of Jesus, oh God. Open up every ear, oh God. God, soften every heart to hear the word, oh God, what thus says the Lord this morning. Oh God, let your people receive, oh God, let us receive what the Lord has to say this morning to us. Let us worship you in spirit and truth. Let us, oh God, give you all the glory because you are worthy and there is none like you. And let the whole church say amen.
give God one more hand clap of praise. Father, we bless you this morning. Lord, we magnify you, we lift you up, and we declare victory this morning. Hallelujah. Look at the person next to you and tell them, Happy Pentecostal Sunday. You know what Pentecost means? Y'all can have a seat. Let's, we're going to do the um, announcements really quick. The very first announcement, if my sound tech, gentlemen, sides, okay, this is a great one. We're going to start off with audiovisual. If you have any um, desire or any giftings in the communications or in the audiovisual department, please see Pastor Bobby and um, Eric, my husband, that normally plays the bass. He's back there waving his hand. Meet with them because um, we really do need some assistance in the audiovisual with the worship and uh, the podcast and all the things that go out. And we want to reach as many people as we can. And the next announcement this morning. And the next announcement this morning. Senior Sunday, you know, maybe my son's back there. Maybe he's having a senior moment like I do all the time. Senior Sunday. This is for all the high school um, graduates, those who have graduated with a master's, bachelor's, doctorate, tech school. Any of you that have, are graduating this year, please see Pastor Emily because um, next Sunday is going to be Senior Sunday, and we want to honor you at the 11 a.m. service. Go to the next one. Bible study, the book of Revelations, this Thursday um, at 12 o'clock. See Sister Wilma Nemec if you want more information. Sister Wilma, will you wave your hand? That's Sister Wilma. So meet with her if you are interested in the Bible study. And this is one I am so excited about. Everyone say, Pastor's Appreciation Day. You know, I'm a preacher's kid, so I understand sometimes all of the things that pastors and their families and their children, and they go through week after week. And I think, and I, I don't think, I know we have one of the best pastors and pastor's wives and family here at Cross Point. Now, and if you don't think so, understand that you get text messages in the middle of the day when things are going rough and he hears you, are you sick? Or Sister Pastor Kendrick gives us calls or texts on us, checks on us. And I want us to honor our pastors. So next Sunday, everyone say 11 o'clock. One service. And it was, again, so no one's confused. One service at 11 o'clock. And we're going to honor our pastors. If you want to give a donation to Pastor Bobby and Pastor Kendra, um, make sure that I have it by Wednesday night. You can put it in an envelope, put it in a card, and we're going to get it together, and we're going to make um, a donation. Now, some of you ladies... Without Pastor Kendra knowing what's going on, we have sent out some information to you. Make sure that I get those items by this coming Wednesday. CJ, go to the next one, please. Everyone say, oh, we're having a wedding shower. Um, we're honoring Ashlyn and Austin. They are getting married, and it's such an exciting time when you're getting married and you're going off on your own. Maybe not for the pastor, our pastors, because they don't want their kids to leave, but I understand it. And we're going to have a... Um, um, a um, a wedding shower on June 11th from 4 to 6. Please, they're registered at Amazon and you can access their wedding registry at thenot.com. That's kind of cool. The knot, tying the knot.com. Parker Wedding. Go to the next one, CJ. Youth Camp. Pastor Emily signed up everyone that she had so far going for youth camp. If your child is still interested in going to youth camp, please get with Pastor um, Kendra today. So um, they can go ahead and, and register your, your child for summer camp. Let's go to the next one. And this would include regional um, youth camp at Petersburg. That is going to be July. Teen week is July 24th through the 28th. And junior week is the 31st through the August 4th. I know a lot of kids are, are excited about this one. Let's go to the next one, CJ. Keepers of the kingdom. You know what? It is time for everyone say vacation Bible school. If you've not been to Vacation Bible School here at Cross Point with your children, you are missing something wonderful. Our kids team puts so much effort and time into Vacation Bible School. It is not just Vacation Bible School. It is an experience where they are taught the Word of God and they are having an encounter with Jesus. And it's going to be July 10th, Monday, through Friday, the July 14th, from 6 to 8, um, 15. And it's for grades uh, 4-year-old to grade 5th grade. 
next one. And that's it. Everyone's the stand. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be in the house of God this morning? It's a special Sunday. It's Pentecostal Sunday. That means that it's not be quiet in your pew Sunday. That means let's just be expressive of who we are and thank God for what he has given us and the gift that he has given us. I am happy to be here this morning. Pastor Bobby is um, filling in at all church this morning. Pastor Knight has retired and they are in the middle of a pastoral change. So he is filling in there. But I am thankful that God has given me the chance to speak this morning on Pentecost Sunday. If my ushers would go ahead and come, we're going to take up our tithes and offering this morning. Isn't it wonderful that we have a church that is active and alive? There are announcements. There are things going on. We are blessed. We are blessed. We're going to bow our heads and we're going to pray. And we're going to ask God to invade this service. Amen. I don't want this service to be about me. I don't want it to be about you. I want it to be about Him. Amen. Because that's what we're here for. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, I thank you for the opportunity to be here in your presence, God. Lord, I thank you that you've spared us another week. God, that you've kept us another week, that you've brought us here into your presence, God, so that we can experience, Lord, what you have for us. God, I ask right now that you would make us open vessels. God, that you would begin to use us. Lord, that you would make us recipients of what you have for us. God, I ask that your Holy Spirit have complete control, Lord, from the worship, Lord, to the message, to the altar service, God, that your Holy Spirit would be the one that is leading, guiding, and directing us the entire way. God, I ask as we take up this offering that it be given for your glory, God. Lord, that it be turned around, Lord, and that it be found a meaningful, Lord, a good sacrifice for you. Lord, I thank you for your presence. Lord, I thank you for every person that's gathered here today. Don't let us leave the same as we came. For it's in your name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Let's worship. Over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. 
wonder how bl blind Bartimaeus sounded. Yes. I just wonder how Peter sounded. I just wonder how these people sounded when they needed or they wanted Jesus. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, I see you're worshiping and praising. But are you worshiping and praising? It's not about the person next to you. It's not about the people here. It's about your Savior. We have a lot of things that go on in our life. We have a lot of obstacles, a lot of trials. Do not allow your trials to steal your praise. Do not allow your circumstances to quench your, your, your thirst, your hunger for the Lord. You're in the place where you can be set free. You're in the place where you can receive that freedom. You're in the place that you can see, receive that help. How would you cry out if Jesus was passing by? Would you say, Lord, please heal me? Or would you cry out? Would you cry out with everything you had? I know it's difficult. I know it's tough. But the Savior is here. God is here. He's in the midst. You have to reach out with faith. You have to reach out by faith with your praise. Reach out by faith with your worship.
Hallelujah. 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 We say it so many times. Just reaching out to Jesus. I know it's difficult at times. But reach out by faith to be able to touch him, the hem of his garment. Yes. Or cry out with desperation and bring the Lord into your situation. But just don't stand back and do nothing. Amen. Because he's here.
give him some praise, church. Give him some praise this morning. He's the God that doesn't change. He's the God that doesn't leave. He's the God that doesn't forsake. He's the God that will fill you, that will empower you, that will make you press forward towards the mark of the high calling. That's the God that we serve this morning. Hallelujah. Give him another hand clap. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, praise team. I don't think it's any coincidence that the Sunday that my husband had to be called away was Pentecost Sunday. Whenever he texted me, he said, you do know that Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. I thought, whew, that's my guts. That's who I am. I am Pentecostal. My very roots are Pentecostal. I believe that there is power and anointing in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. So it's an honor this morning to be speaking here on such a meaningful Sunday. I come from a strong Pentecostal heritage. My great-grandfather was a traveling Pentecostal minister who walked the mountains of western North Carolina sharing the gospel. He passed away because he contracted pneumonia because he refused to cancel some of his services and he walked in the rain and continued to preach. My great uncle was the fifth ordained minister in the church of God. Pentecostalism is part of who I am and I'm, I'm proud of my heritage. I'm thankful for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I'm thankful for my past. But more importantly than that, I'm thankful for my future. Hallelujah. This morning, what other scripture would I go to but Acts 2, 1 through 4. I then will be traveling on to the Acts 2, 42 through 47. Acts 2, 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, just like we felt earlier, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. These verses that are the, at the beginning of Acts were the words that my grandfather was uttering as he lay on his deathbed. He quoted the entire Acts 2 as he lay there dying. What was it about those verses that he held so tightly to? What was it about those words that meant so much to him? It was because he had witnessed in his lifetime the miracles, signs, and wonders that came from the power of the anointing of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He had understood in his lifetime that yielding to the sovereign God made all the difference. And as I was thinking about Pentecost Sunday, God kept taking me back here to Acts 2, to the day of Pentecost. So today, on the day of Pentecost, on Pentecost Sunday, I'm here to ask you a question. Are the winds of Pentecost still blowing, church? Are they still blowing? Hallelujah. The history of Pentecost is familiar. It should be. Because Pentecost changed everything. In a moment, the entire order of humanity changed. Once beloved creatures now became children of the loving Father. Romans 8.15 says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to, of, to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. John 1.12 says, But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Listen to me this morning. Understand what I'm trying to tell you. 
Pentecost is not the idea of God. It's not a piece of God. But it is the real presence of the living God. It is the living, breathing hope of glory that is found within us whenever we receive it. On Pentecost, there was a new wind that was set up, that loose, was set loose on the earth with a fresh breath. It gave hope, it gave empowerment. And the church was born from that wind and fire of Pentecost. A change was manifested among the followers and believers of Christ. They went from becoming, from being scared and hiding and, and afraid for their lives to being empowered and emboldened through the power of the Holy Spirit to, to go and face death, to look the very evil in the eye and to spread the wonder-working news of God. The Holy Ghost was the power and determination that Christians all through the ages have been empowered by. In the first, second, and third century, martyrs like Polycarp and Perpetua and Felicitas and many thousands of others were driven by the power of Pentecost. If you want to know what true sacrifice is, then go back and start studying the life of the martyrs. In the 1500s, it was the leading of the Holy Spirit that gave Martin Luther the power to stand against the immorality of the church and begin the Reformation. In the 1800s, it was the power of Pentecost that spread across New England and Oklahoma and into California under the leadership of men like Jonathan Edwards and, John and William Seymour. And eventually, it made its way back to these Appalachian mountains where men like A.J. Tomlinson and other women and men of God who were hungry for holiness began to seek after God and they experienced the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost and because of their determination you and I will never be the same and still today he is empowering and equipping all those who will hear all those who will lay down their life all those who will say that it is not about me but it is about you God all of those who will lay down their life as a willing sacrifice he is still using and equipping men and women of God and this morning cross point I came to ask you are the winds of Pentecost still blowing the winds of Pentecost came and they produced a change. The church was empowered for its life and ministry through the Holy Ghost. Traditionally, Pentecost was the day set apart to celebrate the wheat harvest and the gift of the Ten Commandments that were given to us on Mount Sinai. But when that first Pentecost, after the Lord's resurrection rolled around, I'm here to tell you a new thing happened. The church came alive. There was a new harvest that was being reached. There was a new thing that was taking place. No longer did we celebrate the wheat harvest, but we began to celebrate the harvest of the sin-sick world coming into the kingdom of light. We began to celebrate celebrate and become empowered to go out and reach generations ever since the Pentecost nearly 2,000 years ago God's will for his church has been more important than the traditions we have built around the church God intends for his church to grow he doesn't want his church to say the same. He wants it to submit to his leadership through the Holy Ghost. He wants it to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. But listen to me this morning. When the winds of Pentecost came, it empowered the church to be a catalyst of change for a sin-sick world. Their tongues become alive with the ability to speak the wonderful things of God. They were empowered for life in the kingdom and ministry to the world. The church, according to 1 Corinthians 12, was to be hand, God's hands, mouth, and feet in this world. For we are the body of Christ. We are to do the things that Christ would do if he were here on earth physically. That's something to judge your life by. 
How many of you can look at your life and say, I am acting, I am doing, I am fulfilling exactly what Christ would be doing if he were walking here on this earth? That's what we're supposed to be, church. The church is to be Christian, to be Christ-like, to be Christ-following. Well, why did the winds of Pentecost continue to blow after the day of Pentecost? Well, I'm glad you asked. Watch this. They were consistent and they were unified. Turn to Acts 2, 42 through 47. And they continued steadfastly, consistent. Steadfast is consistent in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together. They were in unity and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continually, continuing daily, not just on Sunday, with one mind and one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Within these verses, we find a formula. Within these verses, we find an example. I'm not one. I told them in the first service, I hate math. I despise math. Sometimes I wonder how in the world I ended up in the job that I am in because I hate numbers. And I'm sitting all day long, every day long, dealing with numbers and math and everything. And I can't stand it. God has a sense of humor. But within these verses, God tells us, this is how we can continue on. This is how the winds of Pentecost can continue to blow. There are three things that I want you to understand about the early church. Number one, they were steadfast. Everybody say steadfast. They were resolute. They didn't stop. They were consistent. Number two, they were together. Now, together has many different uh, definitions. In this scripture, together means that they were well balanced. They had themselves together, as we would say. How many of you feel like you've got it all together? Am I the only one that sometimes feels like they're a hot mess and I don't have it all together? I, I definitely do not have it all together at times. But the first church, the early church, they were well balanced. They were well balanced. They were, was unity with God. Number three, they were committed daily to worshiping God and living out his precepts. Every day, not just on the weekend, not just on Sunday, not just when it was convenient, not whenever there was just something that they needed. They were consistent every day. I honestly believe that we are not following the example of the early church and that is the reason why we are not seeing the manifestations of the Holy Spirit as they saw in those days. That is the reason why we have dried up churches. That is the reason why we have Christians who are only halfway in. They want to do what feels right to them. It's because they have not followed the examples of the early church. They have not been steadfast. They have not been committed. They've not stayed together. We've got to get back. We've got to get back to our roots. If we want to see the winds of Pentecost burn, if we want to see the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, then we've got to find ourselves being submissive and humble. Can somebody say hallelujah? Now, as I'm talking about these scriptures, I need you to understand something. I'm not talking about us, the church, cross point, but I'm talking about us, the church. We are the church. 
I'm not referring to a building, to an address. I don't care how eloquent. I don't care how magnificent the building may be. I am talking about us as individuals being the church. 1 Corinthians 6.19 says what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. We, the church, too many times are worried about the book of popularity. We have bent to the idol of secularism. We have bent to what makes sense to this world. And we have pushed out what the Bible says. We spend more time trying to keep up with the Joneses, more time chasing after political correctness, trying to live a lifestyle of the rich and famous rather than seeking after the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Oh, I'm preaching now. Somebody better get happy. We're not steadfast. We're wavering with every wind and doctrine. We chase around every preacher that offers us a cheap anointing or a cheap healing. If we'll send in a gift or if we'll, we'll do a certain thing instead of being steadfast to the home church that takes care of us. We fail to stand for truth. We push it off. We say that's just the way things are now. That's just the signs of the time. That's the way the world is now. We don't call right, right. We don't call wrong, wrong. We're scared to call out sin. We're scared to put our foot down. We want to stand back against the things that are immoral. We want to stand back and watch the things that are deplorable continue to go on and never say a word. We try to whitewash it. We try to make Make it look okay to where we've even forgot what is sin. But I'm here to tell you this morning, sin is still sin. If it was sin 25 years ago, then it's still sin today. There is nothing you can do. There is nothing that this world can offer me. If it is sin, then I'm going to look it straight in the eye. I'm going to tell it what it is. And I'm going to declare the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Do I have anybody with me? We, me, you, the church... We've got to take a hard look at ourselves. We've got to start looking inward. If we don't see the winds of Pentecost blowing in our church anymore, if we don't ever feel the anointing upon our lives, if he doesn't meet with us in our car on the way to work every once in a while, if you're not cooking up something in the kitchen and every once in a while the Holy Spirit begins to talk to you and you don't feel that manifestation anymore, Oh, sisters and brothers, it's time to take a look inward. It's time to start saying, am I being steadfast? Have I left my first love? 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So many times we're not together. We're not balanced with our time or in our unity with God. The past few years I've learned a hard lesson in time management. And I'm not good at it. I, I tend to take on more things than I can handle. But God expects us to be together with him, to be together within ourselves. I'm not talking about the church being together. I'm talking about us being together, personally together. We'll work 60 hours a week, pray five minutes before we fall asleep, and read our word when they put the scripture up on the screen on Sunday morning. There's no balance in our life. There is no togetherness within ourselves. We are divided among ourselves we've separated ourselves from our creator but what does mark 3 25 say and if a house be divided against itself that house cannot stand our house 
Our body is a dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. And if this house is divided, guess what's going to happen? You're going to fall. If you don't have a connection with your maker and creator, if you're not having yourself together, if you're not devoting some time to God, then let me tell you something. It is just a matter of time before you fall flat on your face. There is not a one of us that does not need to make time for God hallelujah we chase the mighty dollar more than we chase the mighty God we need to remember that God promises that if we will seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness all these things shall be added unto you we don't have to worry or fret we don't have to worry because we serve a God that knows every hair on our head we have a God that has listened to every cry that we've had. We have a God who has taken those tears. Oh, and some of my favorite verses in the Bible are where he says that he has taken my tears and he has bottled them up and they're in heaven. It's like a sweet fragrance to him. We don't have to worry about anything because we've got a God that will supply all of our needs. You don't have to worry about a thing because your father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He was the beginning, and he's the end. Why are you worried? Why do you sit and try to figure things out on your own? Give your life as a living sacrifice to him. Devote your life and time to him. Every need that you have will be supplied. Everything that you want will be given. He will give you the desires of your heart in his good time. You just got to give him some praise. Hallelujah. We're not daily committed to God. The Bible says that God spoke with Adam in the cool of the evening. In the very beginning of time, God desired communion with his creation. And in Genesis 3.8, after the original sin was committed... The time came for Adam and Eve to go commune with their Savior. But because of their sin, they were embarrassed and they went and hid from him and they separated themselves. Their daily routine with God, their daily time with God was interrupted because of the sin that they had allowed in their life. Because they had a desire for something new. They wanted power. They wanted to be like God. They thought, I don't need you anymore, God. I don't need to speak with you. And they separated themselves. They broke their daily commitment with God. Listen to me, church. I see a pattern that is all too familiar. God desires to speak with us every day. He wants to hear from his children just like I. I want to hear from my kids but what we have done is we've started thinking we're better than daddy we've started thinking we know more we can figure it out and we broke our daily communion with God listen to me it's important for you to talk daily with God share your thoughts your fears your anxieties with him draw from his strength and his love we've allowed sin to separate us and we're stressed and we're worried and we're tired and we're weak we are shells of the people that we want once were because we're not in communication with our maker and our creator hallelujah as the old song says have a little talk with Jesus tell him all about your troubles he'll hear your faintest cry and he will answer by and by just have a little talk with Jesus and what happens he makes it right. We need to have a little talk with Jesus. There are two more things that keep us from experiencing the winds of Pentecost in our lives today. And that is being comfortable with the familiar 
and having contempt for the new. We become comfortable with the way things are. Because we are comfortable with not seeing signs, wonders, and miracles performed, we say things like, God doesn't move in those ways anymore. That was for the old church. Or we start going back to a time when we did see that. Oh, I remember when. I remember when the church was. And we try to make ourselves feel better as if there was something that it wasn't us to blame that we're not seeing the winds of Pentecost anymore. We try to make excuses for why it's not happening. But I am here to remind you this morning that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Holy Ghost is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the same wind of Pentecost that kept my great-grandfather, that kept my grandfather and my grandmother, that's kept my mama and my daddy, is going to be the same Holy Ghost that's going to keep me until the day of his return. It's the same Holy Ghost that's going to empower me to walk through this world until the day I see my Savior step out on that cloud. Hallelujah. He's not changed. He's not stopped performing signs, wonders, and miracles in the church. It's the church that has changed. It's us that has changed. We've got to get rid of preconceived ideas of how the wind of Pentecost should blow. Listen, there is a generation. And listen, I know I'm becoming old because I don't like these new social media venues. But let me tell you something. There are some kids and some young adults who are taking over TikTok, who are putting out some media out there that is bringing glory to the God. To God. Listen, I know some of it is trash. It's absolute trash. But there are absolutely some people who are trying to take hold of every venue that they can in order to bring glory to God. And let me tell you something, if that's the way that God chooses to send another Pentecost, then I'm all for it. Put TikTok on my phone if that's what I've got to do. Whatever I've got to do to reach the lost generation, that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to stop stepping back and saying, oh, that's of the world. Uh-uh. Light will invade the darkness every time. It is time that we as light start going into these dark places. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it sounds like. I don't care where it comes from. I just want you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We're not following the example that the early church left us. Steadfast, together, daily in union with God. The same wind that blew on the day of Pentecost can blow in our churches again. We have taste of it all the time. And I believe that if we will begin to look inward, it won't be an ever once in a while experience. It can be something that we leave with here today and continue on everywhere we go. Hallelujah. Gypsy Smith was an early member of the Salvation Army. He was an evangelist in Britain. And he was asked what the greatest need of today's church was. And when he answered, he said, another Pentecost. And when he was asked the second need, greatest need of the church, he answered, another Pentecost. And when he was asked the third greatest need, he answered, another Pentecost. Church, we need another Pentecost. We need another move of the Holy Ghost. But that's only going to come one way. That is for us to look inside of ourselves. For us to become submissive to the Holy Spirit. For us to get rid of all the things that are keeping us held back. And for us to allow Him to refine and renew this church, if this church will get refined and renewed and set on fire, then this church will get renewed and refined and set on fire. 
we sing that song here at church. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Hallelujah. That's the key, church. That's the key to give yourself away. To forget about all the hopes, the plans, the dreams that you have for your very own life. To forget about the way that it should be, the way that you want it to be. And just allow it to be the way that God wants it to be. Whenever we become submissive, whenever we lay down who we are, whenever we become who God wants us to be, then we'll be able to feel the winds of Pentecost blowing again. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I don't want to teach my kids, and one day in the far off future, my grandchildren. Did you hear that, Ashlyn? About a fairy tale. A fairy tale is something that could have taken place, but we don't have any real evidence that it happened. A fairy tale becomes something that we want to believe, but oftentimes we get made fun of because we do believe in it. It's a fairy tale. It's not true. We're not, we have no evidence that it happened. I refuse to teach my children the doctrine of a fairy tale. If we do not have the Holy Ghost active and working in our churches, then that is exactly what we're doing. We're raising up a generation that's going to look back at us and they're going to say, what is this Holy Ghost that you're talking about? What is this anointing that I hear you preach about? What is this speaking in tongues that you're talking about? Mama, I never saw you on your knees at home. I never saw the Holy Ghost moving at home. Daddy, I don't know what it is for you to say, stop, we're going to pray about this situation. Whenever we become like that, we're teaching our kids a fairy tale. But I refuse, I refuse, I refuse to teach my kids a fairy tale. My kids are going to know that there is a real Holy Ghost that can get down on the inside of you, that can change who you are as a person, that can embolden you, that can give you power to walk among those who don't believe, where they'll turn around and they'll look at you and they'll say, Oh, there's something a little different about that girl. Listen, I'm not teaching a fairy tale. Hallelujah. I want my kids to know what it is to see the Holy Ghost. I want them to feel the winds of the Holy Ghost. I want them to see it, experience, smell it, feel it all around them. I want them to know that it's still real. It's still real. It's still real. Hallelujah. We've got to take a look at ourselves steadfast, together, daily. The truth is, Pentecostal power in the wind is still blowing. It's still here. He's not died. He's not going anywhere anytime soon. He's still pouring it out on those who are willing, on those who are willing to give up whatever they have to. The only question is whether you want to be a conduit of that Holy Spirit or you want to be a hindrance. The early church saw signs, wonders, and miracles because they were full of the Holy Spirit. Where are we at, church? Where are we at? Are the winds of Pentecost still blowing? Would you stand with me? We put limits on what we think the Holy Ghost can do. We put limits on who he is. 
Listen, I'm the biggest advocate for mental health. It's important. If you need therapy, you go to therapy. But you make sure you find a Christian therapist. I love to study psychology. I plan on going and getting my, my master's in counseling and psychology. Because we need to invade the, spiritual, the, the darkness that has become the mental health world. We need good Christian therapists who can speak life and love into a generation. But a lot of times we put a cap on what the Holy Ghost can do. You want me to tell you how to get some of your mental health back? Get you a good dose of the Holy Ghost. Oh, it's not going to cure everything. It's not going to fix it. But what it does is it gives you a filter. You've got a filter that you can work through. You can say, okay, I'm going to work through these feelings through the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You want to see that family come back? You want to see that marriage restored? Get you a good dose of the Holy Ghost. You want to be healed? You want to see sickness and disease flee from you and your household? Get you a dose of the Holy Ghost. Listen, it's not going to fix it all. Oh, but it's going to change your perspective. And perspective is everything. for a second. I shared in the 830 service and I, I'm hesitant to share because live stream. But the night that I received the Holy Ghost, I walked in to a sanctuary and I was embarrassed because I was wearing a pair of pants. I was raised old time Pentecostal old-time Pentecostal. I told them this morning it was blue jeans and kids. You know, your long blue jeans skirt and kids. There's nothing wrong with that. That's how I was raised. And I thought my mamma would absolutely have a fit if she knew I was in this church house in a pair of pants. But my heart wanted to be a church. That was me letting tradition stop me from receiving what God had for me. That's not what he meant. But then I got there, and as I'm standing back in the, the pew, God begins revealing to me, Oh, Kendra, it's not because you've not asked for the Holy Ghost. It's not because you're not worthy of the Holy Ghost. It's not because I don't want to take up residence in you holding on to some bitterness you, you've got this deep root of hurt within you see pastor and I within our first year of marriage we had Ashlyn his mother died and we inherited a 13 year old brother I was 21 years old and I had a baby I had no clue how to take care of. I'm surprised she's alive. That's the God honest truth. And I inherited a 13-year-old brother who had lost his mother, had never been in church, and he had some issues. It was not easy. And I was mad. I was mad that I watched everyone else around me going through life and it just looked so easy they'd gotten married they were having this wonderful life and here my husband and I were struggling to make ends meet to figure out how to navigate this I was just a kid I was a kid 
raising another kid, two kids. And I was angry. But that night, the praise and worship team began to sing that song. I'm trading in my sorrows. I'm trading in my shame. I'm giving it up for the joy of the Lord. At that point, I said, God, you know all this deep-seated anger that like, I'm embarrassed that I even have. I'm embarrassed that I even feel like this. It doesn't feel good even now to be up here your pastor's wife. I should have been happy that I could have been there in his time of need. I should have been happy that God chose me. But I wasn't. I was mad. I let that go that night. And I told God, right here, in this moment, I'm trading all of that in if you will just give me your joy. If you will just transform my life. Because I can't handle all of this anymore. I can't do it. And what God gave me was a good old-fashioned dose of the Holy Ghost that has changed my life. I'm not the person I used to be. Yeah, I'm a little shy and I'm a little awkward, a lot awkward at times, but I'm no longer scared to speak to anyone about the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost because I know the difference that it made in my life. And I'm here to tell you this morning, I don't care what you have in your life. If you will be submissive to him, he will trade in every bit of that junk and he'll give you joy undescribable. He'll give you power. He'll give you anointing. And the winds of Pentecost will begin to blow in your home, in your family, in your church, and in your life. Hallelujah. This morning, I need to know, is there anybody who's willing to say, I, I submit, God. I, I submit to whatever you want from me. There's some stuff going on in my life. I need your Holy Ghost, God. I need your Holy Ghost. You may have never experienced the Holy Spirit. This morning could be your morning. You may have experienced it a hundred times. Well, guess what, my friend? You need it again and again and again and again. This morning... I want you to make your way to this altar. If you can say, God, I submit everything that I have to you. I want you to fill me. I want you to give me a power and anointing to witness to my family. I want you to give me power and anointing to be a stronger witness in my church. There shouldn't be a one of us that is sitting back right now. Every one of us should be desiring some more power in our life. Oh, he shunned that I, he shunned I. Oh, hallelujah. He shunned that I, he shunned I. Lift your hands and begin to praise him. Begin to invite the Holy Spirit into this place. You may not understand. You may not even be sure of what you're asking for. But I am here to tell you the Comforter can change every situation. Don't sit back there and wait. Today is your day. Hallelujah. Begin to call on him, people. Begin to call on him.
Lord is ready. God, if I burn, I'll burn for you. With no hesitation, without reservation, God, if I burn, I'll burn for you. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. I want what you desire. I'm gonna burn for you. Give me a fresh, give me a fresh, fresh fire.
fresh. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. I want what you desire. I want a burn for you. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. I want what you desire. I want a burn for you. Give me a fresh, give me a fresh, fresh fire.